In this video, we're going to explore with charges and make a nice interactive button here. As you can see here, you have all these colors here. And when you click on it, all the labels are adjusting, the colors here are matching, and the values are showing up here, as you can see. And this is extremely fun to do. And with this, you can start to learn many, many advanced items as well. So I hope you're ready. And let's start working on this with Chart.js and with pure CSS and JavaScript. In this video, we're going to work on the design. So let's start with the basics here. All right. So we have this very basic template and I won't be using Bootstrap for now. I'm going to use more and more CSS to improve my CSS skills as well. So first things first, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a div and in this div, we're going to put in the chart. In this chart and then below the chart, we will create the buttons that are matching with it. So let's create a div and in this div will have the class of chart box. All right. And then next, what we have is also another one is a div class. And this is the button or button box, probably it will be the right term. All right. So let's put in the chart in here. So to do that, I'm just going to copy the codes from chart.js. So if you go to chart.js and the latest version is 3.2.1, you can find here all of this information here. I'm going to copy this one here above, put it in here. And I'm going to remove this width here. Later on, we're going to assign our own specific width in CSS. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of this code here from the script all down to the bottom. And once we did that, we have here a very nice chunk of code. All right, so once we got that, I just put a proper indentation and remove everything that's not necessary. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to remove this, or at least not remove, rename this. I want to give this a constant. This is a constant, constant. And we can remove this one if you want. Is it necessary? No, but I like to have this cleaner. This is fine because this is the new way in Chart.js 3. You can keep it like this. All right, so we've got this, but what I want is a line chart. So the type will be adjusted to line. And next, I'm going to remove all of these colors here except for one, because that will be the color that we're going to select. All right, so once we have this and we have this one here, that's fine. Everything here is correct. So if we save this now, well, what I want to do before we even reload the page, let's put in the CSS to ensure that this has been uh, correctly set in a way. Oh, and I can see I did a small mistake here, sorry. I put the button box, this should not be done here. My apologies for that. All right. The button box will have the buttons, not the script. All right. So what we're going to do now is then the CSS. We just put in here a quick style sheet. All right. And in between here, we'll say the chart box, class chart box. And then we say here max with 400 pixels. So once we do that, we go to our blank page, refresh. And we have this, but what is going on? Oh, of course, my apologies. I'm forgetting the JavaScript library for chart.js. So we're going to click here on getting started. Copy this as well. Don't forget this, very important. Without it, it won't work. All right, so we save this here. Now we should have it working. There you are. So now we have this here. And what we want to do now is to add up here in the button box a unordered list. Then here we have a list item, and in this list item we have a href. And this href will contain the buttons that we're going to use to trigger the colors. Uh, sorry, that's not it. There should be hashtag. Sorry. All right. And then here we will give it the class. So what is what is the class that we want? Well, basically this btn, and we say here the class of the color. So we say red because it's a red button. Later on we have blue, and we have green as well. So we're going to duplicate this two more times. Once you duplicate it, here, put in blue, and then we have here green. There you are. So we have three different color items. So we have these here. Now what I want to do is I want to give them some proper CSS so they look slightly more appealing. As you can see, there's still nothing. If you refresh, probably because we have no text 
So I'm going to add up some text, which is straightforward, the colors. Blue, green, uh, red, blue, and green. All right, so we save this, and now you can see here we have the colors. So let's go to CSS and put in these colors here. So what I want to do here is, first of all, the button box, that's the class we're going to select. And in here, we're going to say max width 400 pixels as well. And the reason I'm doing that is just to be consistent here. All right. And then what we want to do is, here now, we're going to pinpoint the specific items. So we say here, we have dot button box. There's a UL. Here we can say display because we want to make it inline flex and then we have this one that's one then the next one will be dot button box ul and then li and they say list style we'll say none removing all the bullet points that we have here and then once we did that, finally, we're going to pinpoint the anchor or the href, which is basically that, but we can do it very straightforward by saying button and then, uh, sorry, not by that. No, that's incorrect. Sorry. Uh, button a, and then in here, we'll just indicate the size of the button and what we want to do with the button. So we say here, we have, um, your border radius to make sure that it's a rounded button which is 20 pixels and then we say uh, text declaration because it's a link we say none we don't want to have underline and then we say color we're going to fix a fix or set a fixed color which will be white or triple f and once we have this most likely we have to do padding and a padding and then after margin so a padding Top and bottom, five pixels. Left and right, five pixels for ten pixels. And I would say margin left of a sort right. And the reason why is that we need to, once they are in line here, we need to push them to the side. Margin right, five pixels, so they don't overlap each other. Save this, refresh. There we are. Oh, uh, let's double check here what's going on. Did we have everything? Yes, border in line, color. Uh, well, we can do it like this then are we showing there we are that looks better so we're not done yet and then here the button and then we say red class red and here we're going to select the color and the same goes for blue and green green and here we have blue and what we want to do here is well we have this color here so we can just get the border color which is nice we'll just get this color here and then we say here background color all right then we have another background color here this could be uh, i have no idea well you could make this very high because this is the b is this one so let's make this 255 and we say this one will be 99 and then finally we have the green one where we do almost similar 255 and this one will be 99 so the highest amount of green all right so once we have this and save this the color should now be matching refresh this um let's double check here what's going on oh of course sorry Make sure you put them together. No space between the classes. If not, they're going to recognize it. There you are. So we have this now. We have this bit purplish blue, but that's fine. I'll, I'll accept that for now. So what we're going to do next is basically the JavaScript. And the JavaScript will match basically this. So all we have to do here is the following. We're going to put in here, and you're going to learn some very, very useful things for Chart.js, but also if you're uh, in CSS and JavaScript itself. Or at least the JavaScript part as well, because you learn here a command. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function here. And this function will be change chart. Very straightforward function. And this will be, of course, triggered when we click our buttons here. And when we click on this, this should be triggered. 
So we're going to build a few data points that we need. So what are the parameters we need here? In this case, we're going to have three parameters. Let me explain. First of all, when we click on this, we want to extract the color button here and, and put it in here. So we want this color to match. Secondly, we want also, of course, the, the data point here or this uh, point radius color should be also matching completely red, not the light red that we have here. I don't enjoy that one so much. So next what we want, sorry, finally, for secondly, what we need is the data itself, but also, and that's the third item, is the votes. You can see here right now the number of votes, but we want to make sure that this label here matches. If we say red, should be red voters. Blue, blue voters. Green, green voters. All right, so let's start and do that right now. So three items. We say color, comma. What's another parameter? Is let's say label, comma, and then finally it's the data. And the data is basically all these numbers here. All right, we've got all of this now, and now we can start working on this. So how can we work on this? Well, basically we're going to assign it. So we say here. To assign this or reassign the values here, all we have to do is we have to select the value that we want to reassign. So we get here my chart, data, data sets, and then we get, well, if we want the color, border color, and then after that also the background color. So let's get those first. Yes, dot. And then we go here to data, dot, and then we have here data sets. Very important with data sets, this is an array, meaning that this is index zero. Index zero. Alright. This index zero. Dot what do we want now? Well we want the background color here. Background color and the equal equal to what? Equal to the color that we select based on the button that we select. And I will assign the button colors later on, just once we've done this. So once we have this one, we have another item because here, what I, as I indicated is, I don't want only the background color, I want the border color matching. Both should be matching same color, so I will not have any difference in color, differences in color. So what I will do here is basically this will be this one here. That's the same. However, here, what we need is we just need to copy this, and then we say, you know, background color, but none. the border color. Copy border color, put it in here. So once we did that, we have a next item, that is the label. Well, how do we get to label? Well, remember, there are two types of labels, label here, or labels here. And now, uh, you have one with the labels, with the plural, and the other one is just named label. So there's two types of labels, and it might be very confusing, because I'm talking in plural, and this is already set as plural. However, we're going to pinpoint the single value here. All right, so my chart, data, data sets, then label and I have this here I think this should not be here sorry this should not be there I'm just uh, that was for demo purposes all right so what we're going to do here is we do here again my chart dot data dot data sets zero dot label equal label very simple and very straightforward and then finally what we have is the data itself. So basically you go back again here, my chart, data, data sets, and here you have double data, as you can see, but then we need to have this one here, data sets, and the data here. That's it. So I'm going to just copy this for simplicity, put it in here and say data, in here as well, data. Once we have this, we are very close to completion because now what we need to do is update the chart. So the moment we did this, by clicking on the button, so by clicking on any of these buttons, instantly this chart will be updated with the new matching data. All right, and you can do so many fun things with this. Now I'll be showing you with many other videos that are coming up on this. So my chart. Yeah, so we select first, what is the chart we want to update? Well, that's my chart. That's basically the my chart is the canvas ID, is the ID name my chart, simple as that. And I say here, update, that's it. So once we did this, refresh here, you will see it won't work. And the reason why it doesn't work, of course, is we didn't yet assign the parameters in here. So let's go and start to assign them. So how do we assign this? So let me show you. In here, we have the items here, and then basically on 
click we want to trigger it. So we say your on click equal, and here we select the function. What is the function name? Change chart. Let's double check. Is that correct? Change chart. Yes. Then we have three. Oh, and then we have three times or three different parameters. Color. We have the color. So what is the color for red? Well, I'll just select this color here. And we get this, this, including the quotation. Remember, it should be quoted. All right, because it's a string. Comma. What's the next one? It would be the label. What is the label? Well, the label was red voters. Then comma. And then we get the values. So the, this one, of course, has the same values here. So we're going to get this data here. We're going to get this, but we don't put quotations here. Why we don't put quotations? This is an array of numbers. So no need. It's not a string. All right. So we've got all of this. And once we have this, we're basically done here. So the next thing we can do is copy this and duplicate this two more times. All right. So we got this here, and I realize you can see I'm getting an error, and the reason why is because I forgot to have the double quotation here. Put a double quotation in here. All right, and then same here. There we are. So make sure you don't make that mistake. So this is the double quotation for the equal that's basically here. On click, and then double quotation between here. All right, so we have here one with blue. So this will be blue voters, and this will be green voters. And then we have the color. So what will be the color? Well, the color, we already have it here, I realize. This is perfect. We copy this blue. Copy all of this here. Put it here. There you are. And finally, we're going to copy the green one. And paste this down here. So now we have this all nicely pasted. What we want to do next is matching the, the value. So we want to have some data. I'm going to make up some data. You can make up some data as well as you go. So let's say blue is uh, basically a, a slow starter, but then after that, it starts to expand rapidly to 15 points. All right. And then green is going up and down. So we have this, and then it has seven, and then it has again 10, and then it goes to eight, and then it has. 11 and then it goes to 7 all right so we have this here so we have some up and down values all right once we did it, save this we have a few items not really fixed yet you will see that this should be text or adjusted but i just want to test this first let's refresh you will see we have some color errors and i'll explain to you later on right so once we click on this you can see here red voters changes that's correct and if we see here number of votes so we need to of course match our text here and then if we select on this, you can see here blue voters, it becomes blue, but we have a problem with our color. And this is a, a uh, not a video bug, but this is just a small item that we have to fix. I will explain to you what this is. But if we hover over it, the color, and then we click on green, then you can see the color starts to work. Looks very buggy. Don't worry, we'll fix this right now. All right, the first thing we're going to do is here, we're going to say here, red voters. And the next item here is basically this. So why is this the issue? Well, basically it's an array. Charge has created an array option here where you can put in, if you would put in two values, it can change the color of those values. So let me show you. If you make this black and save this, it will have here, as you can see here right now, it creates all these kind of nice commands. So it's trying to look for this as well, but of course it doesn't recognize anything here. So that's why it doesn't work here. So what we need to do is remove just the arrays. No need for this. This this is a nice fancy trick, suitable if you have only two colors, and then we just loop it around. However, we don't need anything. All we want is just this value here. Same story for the border colors. We just make sure that this is just consistent. No redundant data or extra data needed. That's it. So once we save this and refresh, now we will see the colors, even of the point radius, is working correctly all the voters has been set if i refresh again you can see the label has been set already and there you are so you can do really a lot of fun things with this and if you have any questions regarding this or still struggle with it put them in the comment section below thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link 
directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.